in the opening opening sequence, we have like blatant camel toe with some like a little bit of uh, escapage over here. And then going into like full blown, full board Kevin Lavroni, Maryland muscle machine, full blown whole implosion. Like this is next level. Sup guys, Derek, moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out the female Giga Chad equivalent. This is, well specifically actually, this is the Asian sky, if you haven't seen the video I did, the skyscraper, real life Asian Giga Chad Thanos is the video I did last year that, uh, you know, was uh, well received and kind of funny. Basically this guy, was the epitome of a specimen and a half of a fucking male physique. This guy is a IFBB pro and has stepped on the Olympia stage, if I recall correctly. And um, basically I got notified about <laughs> him from like some really fucking ridiculous looking pictures on Instagram that Lex, uh, Lex Little sent me. And I couldn't help but notice the resemblance to the, um, fucking epitome of you know goddamn masculinity himself giga chad so he became known as the asian giga chad thanos and he had some uh pretty ridiculous uh shots in his uh if you go watch the original video uh, some ridiculous <laughs> shots just wearing like quadruple fucking x clothes and just towering over motherfuckers including over his uh his uh, girlfriend, I guess, that he would uh, drop, I don't remember what I said, but just dropping like teardrops on her fucking head or something. I forget what I said, but it was kind of funny. So anyways, if you haven't seen the real life Asian Giga Chad Thanos, go check it out. He is uh, has a sick physique and he actually competes. So you definitely, uh, I think his, his real name is Kim Min Su, but he goes by Thanos, like self, like proclaimed is his, uh, I don't know if this is the legitimate English version of this name i don't fucking know but anyways he is uh he's pretty sick so anyways this chick yuang harong <laughs> yuang sorry i'm just like uh like it, it sounded like i said you're wrong for a sec yuang harong 20 12 29 doesn't go by any you know impressive english name i guess you know but her physique is fucking redonkulous dude if you look at this this is like it's like, what am I even looking at, dude? It's like a fucking anime come to life, essentially. Walking around with a toned six pack and has proportions that make no fucking sense whatsoever. Razor sharp sex lines, dialed in six pack. Looks pretty absurd. Her waist makes no sense. And the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is because I actually got an email from a guy who basically said, um, like I didn't, I didn't know this chick existed either. I just got an email that said insane Chinese doctor's physique after giving birth and then just linked, <laughs> linked me to the Instagram. So I was like, okay, it's kind of a, like, I don't often, I don't open very many things cause I just get inundated with like dumb shit. But like when I get a message, that's like literally a YouTube, like catchy title, you know, I might fucking open it. So I click it and I'm like, okay, so not only like, again, we can all acknowledge I'm sure there are other chicks with a physique, you know, more comparable to her than there are guys who look like, uh, you know, Thanos, Giga Chad. But this is pretty absurd. But the thing that was notable is the fact that she's had a kid. So one thing I thought would make a relevant video, I imagine a lot of women are concerned about this, is the idea of can you get back to your physique within short order or at all after you've had a kid? You know, a lot of people think it's going to, you know, ruin their physique, you know, cause ridiculous stretch lines that are never going to, uh, you know, it's going to completely dismantle your look and you're otherwise going to be a shell of your previous self and look, you know, I don't know, just never get back to baseline. This chick does not seem to, uh, seems to indicate much otherwise. This is her kid and this is her after having the kid. Obviously not like exactly right after, but I mean, like her physique has not regressed at all. If anything, it's gotten way better. Like, and this is not just about like i was like some of these pictures were like fucking absurd dude i'm just like it's like bakar nebieva plot like downsized a little bit to a more like 
not proportional, like, I guess proportional because Bacar's quads are, like, fucking massive. But this chick is, like, I don't know, the epitome of, like, fitness hybrid female shreddedness. Like, I, I don't fucking know. Like, she just looks absolutely nuts, dude. Here she is doing a behind-the-head um, shoulder press with a easy bar and some Captain America shield plates. Kind of interesting. Um, but, again... I want to kind of dig into the hormone profile that occurs postpartum and kind of get into what it actually takes to get back to baseline. Um, like this chick's literally like a manga anime character come to life essentially. Um, it has a physique that, well, I don't know, maybe some chicks think this is gross, but I think, you know, a lot of us, I guess in the fitness industry would, you know, be on board with saying this chick is like the epitome of, I don't know, like aesthetics. Probably like this is probably a bit too much for most people. I'm just saying on like a day to day basis. This is like, I don't know, the Joe aesthetics of females or something like, I don't know. But her physique has actually improved since having the kid. So this is at the start of her Instagram. Um, she posted apparently what happened to my account? Yuang Harong 122 suddenly can't log in. So I guess, I don't know, her account got disabled or something, perhaps for showing literal vagina shots i don't know because like some of these shots are pretty uh pretty out there dude like she has um in some of these like costumes and whatnot she's pretty much just straight up like flashing her butthole for everyone to see so like it's not surprising that some of these shots would be a bit uh i don't know on the fence for instagram perhaps like look at the thumbnail on this one dude jesus just chilling like literally <laughs> we're gonna have to censor this dude Put a blur over editors, please. I can literally, I can literally see her fucking vagina, bro. Like this is in the opening, opening sequence. We have like blatant camel toe with some, like a little bit of uh, escapage over here, and then going into like full blown, full board Kevin Lavroni, Maryland muscle machine, full blown butthole implosion. Like this is next level. No wonder you. I would not be surprised if the Instagram got taken down before. This is absolutely nutty. Nutty, bro. Uh, imagine, <laughs> look at the fucking comment. We could never use the same gym. I would be so horny. <laughs> uh, I wish I could read some of these, <laughs> some of these other ones that are not in English. Bro, that's next level camel toe. Unreal. But anyways, her physique after having the kid only got better from what I could tell. This was like uh, April 12th. And then moving forward, obviously, to the more recent shots. Here is uh, June 16th. Uh, moving forward a bit more. Here is uh, August 4th. Fucking shredded. Um, and then the more most recent ones where she is literally a fucking 3D dealt physique competitor, essentially. Just perpetually. And then has a picture of uh, my diet makes my body fat lower and my muscles grow day by day. But anyways, Googling her, I was like, okay, let's see what, uh, well, actually, first off, by the way, I was like, what is the female equivalent of a chat? Apparently, it is a Stacy. The female counterpart to the chat in slang is the Stacy, or originally the Trixie. So I don't know how this ended up, uh, who decides this, <laughs> or how it changes, but this is according to Wikipedia. Apparently, there is uh, other ones, though, too. Um, let's see, like, there's the... Uh, the chat at. I didn't think that sounded as good as this. But this one was the Wikipedia definition. So I just figured, okay, this is probably the most, I don't know, legitimate one versus these like random ones down here. So anyways, Googled her to see if she was like some famous influencer from, uh, I don't know, that got her account disabled or something like that. Um, there is some articles about her, some old videos and whatnot. Actually, her physique has been pretty, uh, um, like this is her when she was pregnant last year. Pregnant bodybuilder effortless, effortless, fucking can't even talk, effortlessly lifts weights. Yuan Harong, one, two, two. Even when you're nine months prego, this chick is, actually, she, yeah, she's nine months pregnant here. She's still popping that ass, bro. And she, here she is doing some uh, lunges as best as she can. So if you go look at her on YouTube, there are some uh, motivationals and whatnot, and she does seem to have somewhat of a presence. Like this, viral video by Aesthetics Legacy, Yuan Harong, real life Chun-Li. Uh, hopefully I said that right. I'm pretty sure Chun-Li is a Mortal Kombat character um, or some other gaming series. I don't remember off the top of my head. But um, 
Like, look at this, bro. Uh -huh. My fucking voice just cracked. Look at this, bro. This is absolutely... What the, with these fucking Captain America bumper plates? Um, okay, well, apparently that is YouTube friendly because it did blow up. And it's just her uh, popping the old... Popping the old behind, bro. Um, imagine you walk in and some chick is just hip thrusting on an incline bench with like fucking seven plates and you're like, hey, can I, uh, how many sets you got left? Meanwhile, there's a manga character hip thrusting <laughs> the weight of like a fucking grizzly bear beside you. Assume, these are probably like, I'm assuming some plates that aren't actually 45s, but whatever. Anyways. So getting into the hormonal profile, what exactly happens after having a kid? So the first few weeks, Apparently, the major hormonal changes that ensue are um, progesterone and estrogen levels crash into, you know, seemingly nothingness, essentially. And oxytocin surges immediately following birth to compensate for the initial drops in progesterone and estrogen. Prolactin increases to encourage breast milk production. And um, there seems to be some sort of an imbalance potentially in androgens to estrogens that then ensues as well. That may otherwise lead to this, you know, like postpartum depression or at least be intertwined in it to some extent. However, when you think of muscle building hormones and things that are otherwise going to aid in your body composition, allowing you to, you know, stay insulin sensitive, allowing you to build muscle, allowing you to burn fat. Like the main thing you would think about is where are my testosterone levels going? And obviously, you know, downstream to that estrogen too. So estrogen, if it's in the gutter, it's going to be harder to regulate your body composition as well as have proper, you know, neurological health, mental state, etc. So I can see why some of this stuff happens in the, uh, you know, three to six week mark. Apparently there's the roller coaster like emotions, postpartum depression symptoms seem to set in at this point. And that's after the positive post birth hormones continue to fade. And this takes months to kind of reach homeostasis as you kind of uh, go through this like wild downswing and upswing of certain hormones. And it has been, you know, there's been studies trying to decipher exactly what hormones are causing the postpartum depression. I thought it was kind of interesting. Day into this uh, accepted manuscript for high serum testosterone levels during postpartum period associated with postpartum depression. Basically, they found no significant aberrations between the control group and the postpartum depression group between their progesterone and estrogen levels. But there was a significant correlation with um, let's see, significantly high testosterone levels were observed in cases with postpartum depression. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. this study shows there's an association between persistent high serum test levels in women following childbirth and postpartum depression. So when you actually look at the hormonal profile of women during pregnancy, you actually see estradiol levels, you know, significantly spike as do binding protein production. Testosterone levels stay relatively stagnant if they increase a bit, but they don't crash in the postpartum period. However, you see these other hormones crash into the abyss. You have estradiol levels going from almost fucking 17,500 picograms per milliliter down to like nothingness, bro. You have progesterone levels nearing 5,000 picograms per milliliter crashing into nothingness with your testosterone levels staying, staying relatively consistent. So you can imagine there is a big mismatch between androgen to estrogen and progesterone levels in females now, almost indicative of like a, not a postmenopausal state because you otherwise wouldn't be producing testosterone either, but this imbalance of androgen to estrogen. If you've ever had your estrogen levels crashed as a man with letrozole, you know, Remedex, Aromacin, like letrozole, I think is the most, the one that most bodybuilders have the most experience with it, making them feel like dog shit when they intentionally crash their estrogen levels pre-contest or something of that nature or individuals that have been haphazardly prescribed high doses of Arimidex with their TRT and otherwise don't need it. You guys know how potent it is and how negative it is on your mental state um, to have your estrogen levels in the gutter. You know, it ruins your sex drive. It makes you feel like, you know, life is black and white essentially. So you can imagine when females go from like a state of not like you as a male going from, let's just say, I don't know, 40 picograms per milliliter down to zero with an aromatase inhibitor. Imagine now going from almost 17,500 <laughs> down to almost nothingness in the span of a couple of weeks. You can imagine 
what kind of potential outcome they may, that may have and why there is such a giant fucking swing in emotional state and stability among um, women in the postpartum period. So again, like it's kind of like, this is just kind of like interesting to note as far as the muscle building hormones though, it doesn't seem to be indicative of a hormonal environment that's less conducive to getting back your muscle or, you know, getting back to your body composition that you otherwise had. You're not dealing with a testosterone level in the gutter that you then have to like, you know, wait for your endocrine system to kind of like PCT yourself to baseline. You seem to be in a pretty like capable position to handle, you know, weights, stress in the gym, etc. However, this part, the progesterone estrogen being in the gutter, like finding the motivation to do anything would probably be as well as dealing with the fact that you just had a kid, like obviously getting into the gym is going to be a lower priority and be harder to do. But I'm just saying from an actual hormonal environment state, finding yourself in a position to then get back to where you were, it doesn't seem to be indicative that you're going to have a hard time necessarily getting back there or that it's going to be impossible to do so. It seems like a lot of women think that having a kid is otherwise going to ruin their form through the sheer proportional stretching potentially of their stomach. Above and beyond that, the hormonal pro hormonal profile that ensues after having a kid are either of those like significantly counterproductive to getting back to a decent physique. You know, in practical application, it does not seem to be something that should hinder you from getting back in shape. And a lot of women, um, including Yuang Harong, have shown that it is definitely absolutely possible to get back to peak form in relatively short order. So again, I thought this was just an interesting educational opportunity, not only for seeing the wild fluctuation in hormones and why you might expect, you know, where postpartum depression may set in, set in and what kind of biomarkers may otherwise be indicative of that imbalance and what to be looking for potentially if you're an individual who ends up with like personally in that situation if you're a girl or your girlfriend slash wife ends up in this position if you're a guy you know you're watching this channel and you're otherwise um trying to be uh on top of you know ensuring they have the smoothest experience possible or just to understand what kind of environment they're in and potentially you know address it in some capacity because again having a mismanaged hormone profile um, like there's definitely diet manipulation as well as, you know, potential supplementation that may come into play here that could otherwise get you back, um, to where you want to be in a faster time frame, And that's not necessarily from just the testosterone aspect, because it looks like it stays relatively consistent, but from the progesterone and estrogenic aspect, there may be things to, um, look into when it comes to getting back to homeostasis quicker and rectifying that like low hormone, like bad androgen dominant environment, perhaps. Um, now again, binding proteins are still pretty fucking high in the postpartum de postpartum period. So it doesn't seem like you're going to be as androgen dominant as you would be should your SHBG have been, you know, close to where it was at baseline prior to pregnancy. However, still the grant, the massive disparity between androgens and estrogens here is going to be problematic for some individuals. Uh, oh, by the way, these are totally different units of measurement for progesterone. This is in nanograms per milliliter. I might have accidentally said picograms per milliliter. The estrogen itself is in picograms per milliliter. The progesterone is in nanograms. Testosterone is in nanograms per deciliter instead of milliliter. And SHBG is at nanomoles per liter. Um, I definitely was just looking at this by accident. So anyways, that is notable as well. So as far as getting back up to baseline, that is uh, of note. And are you going to ruin your physique by getting pregnant and having a kid? No, you're not. This chick has proved otherwise, as have <laughs> many other chicks, evidently. And this is just, uh, I don't know, one example of the absolute pinnacle of aesthetics, I would say, that showed that having a kid made uh, no difference whatsoever. And she is uh, um, thriving in the gym still and uh, cranking out heavy duty um hip thrusts and uh, booty pops bro so anyways that is today's video hopefully you learned something interesting um like subscribe check out my blog mereplacemoredates.com follow me on instagram and mereplacemoredates facebook snapchat twitter tiktok couple podcasts if you want to support the channel you can check out anything i'm associated with in the video description below my trt clinic i'll telemedicine from the comfort of your own home if you are a female in 
perimenopause, postmenopause, or you are a guy whose you know, mom may otherwise benefit from hormone intervention and or you just want to assess your health, um, we do deal with males and females. Although I t typically talk about the male side of the equation, it's absolutely imperative that the women in your life or yourself, if you are a woman, you get your shit checked out as well. Um, like for example, my mom, she was walking around with single digit test levels, estrogen levels, like she is in menopause and as a result is basically putting herself in a much greater proportional risk of osteoporosis, um, Alzheimer's, like a myriad of things that are going to occur through hormonal deprivation that may otherwise be attenuated to some extent with hormonal intervention. So it's definitely something to be um, looking at very seriously if you are a female um, and if you're not, you know, perimenopause, just assessing your health and staying on top of things and seeing how you could otherwise optimize and or um, get on or off of birth control. What kind of modalities would be ideal to, you know, not fuck with your hormones the most, achieve the best body composition outcomes or to fuck with your mental state the least. This kind of stuff requires expert oversight in my opinion and it's what we thrive in and I definitely recommend checking it out if you do not have a high quality doctor in your camp. Link is in the description below. As well, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas designed myself from scratch and recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance while being mindful of health and other kind of satellite things that otherwise go completely unaddressed by most cookie cutter influencer diets on Instagram that just want you to hit it if it fits your macros and hit your protein. Um, clothing company that sponsors me, literally wearing one of their shirts right now, and anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.